Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitching Mommy, and I'm here for a stitching update. <clears throat> it's been a little longer than I said I was going to take. Um, I think it's a full two weeks now since I had my last update, but when I believe I said I was going to come back at the end of last week, and when the end of last week was rolling around, I, I was still having a lot of people commenting on my last video, and I realized I would want to make a clean break between July stitching and arbitrary August, so there was only a few days left of July. So I figured I'd just wait <clears throat> and do one video um, now. Today's the 31st, so the last day of July. Um, I don't have a set plan for today, which is kind of funny, but today is my um, like extra day, I guess, because I had a two-day rotation in July. <clears throat> so we'll see. I I have a few ideas, but I'm not quite sure what I'll do with today. And because I'm filming, I may not get a lot of time anyways. So that plays into my um, decisions. But I do have a few things to show you, so let's get started. Um, first off, I wanted to share a finish that I made a while ago. Um, I don't know that I have it written on here, but I have it listed... I finished this um, probably 10 years ago, and maybe 11. I don't remember if I finished it while I was pregnant or not, but it's one of the charts that Mirabilia has re-released, and I've been seeing people talk about it and kit it up, and so I thought I would share it, and I have shared it before on my finished video back early in my floss tube life, so that was probably, I think it was March of 2017, so over a year, like a year and a half ago. So I um, thought I would share it again for those of you who may not have seen my finished video, and I will link my finished video below in case you're interested in seeing everything else. That video includes all of my large finishes from before I started to do floss tube videos. So what I might do at like my two year anniversary, which I think is like January or February, I will maybe do another finish video of what I've finished so far since doing floss tube. Just a recap of some of those things. Um, but in the meantime, I thought I would share this one again, just to show you. This is my Seaside Kingdom <clears throat> by Mirabilia. And I have, I have this hanging in the hallway near my kids' bedrooms, right outside my son's bedroom. <clears throat> and w one of the big things I love about this are the little charms. Like here's a shell charm and there's leaf charms and a starfish charm and there's some flower charms up here in the castle. And there's these big beads here. Um, so it's just a really fun stitch and the the, the other thing about this which is unique is it's there's a lot of white space so I've heard um, I know Jesse Marie might end up doing this on white also and but I know some people will try to do like blue sky tan fabric or all all tan or all blue or something to try to un to try to recreate like the background of a beach however the <clears throat> the castle let's get some light here the castle has a lot of fabric show through <clears throat> all throughout it. So if you have want something with blue background and then tan down here, you're gonna have blue in your castle. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind. I went with white just because that's easy. It was probably MCG textiles from the craft store. Um, 32 count, which is the rest, the, the pattern calls for 32 count. Linen, so white. There's an actual ribbon here that you tack down. <clears throat> so that was just something that I would, I loved it. On, I love it on white. It it lets all the elements sing without being too busy. Um, so just keep that in mind that there is a lot of show through, in all of it. Like there's no, the most stitching is in the the kids. The kids are fully fully stitched, but the castle and the sky and the sand is not fully stitched. This is just just fabric with some beads. This path has a, a little bit of stitching right here and just a lot of beads. So most of this is just beaded with some shading 
on the castle that's stitched. So it is very heavily, um, very airy. So it, it, it is a quicker stitch for that reason, but that is something to consider when you're choosing fabrics. You might just want to go with white. And this is what mine looks like. I, I bought this pattern when it was had been declared, it had been announced that it was, it was being discontinued. Um, and I've always thought it was cute. So when it when they announced that on the Marybilia website, you know, ages ago, I'm like, oh, I need that one. So I went and I went and bought it, and then um, figured I would only stitch it if I knew for sure we were going to have kids, because I thought I could hang it up near the kids' bedroom. Um, and then as soon as I found out I was pregnant with my first child, I started stitching it. So I may have finished it while I was pregnant. I don't remember necessarily it's probably written down somewhere but so it could be 11 years old but that's that one and I just thought I would share that again for anybody who is who has it now and is kidding it up just to be aware that there is a lot of white space and to take the time to find if you don't I, if you don't have I, I think um Dina half stitch cross stitch was she found a bead pack for it that came with all the treasures if you could find that, that would be wonderful because those treasures are like one of the like really interesting features of that pattern because they are it's it's such a bead heavy piece that it kind of you can really tell those treasures. If you find your own charms, that's another thing, but it's not something that you can really leave the charms off and have it be right, you know. So you need to find something, either the ones that are called for or some similar ones. Um, because they're like holding, you know, she's holding the starfish, or he's holding a bunch of leaves. Like, you you really need those pieces to make the piece. So, anyways, that's just my two cents. Um, the other thing, I got a little bit of haul. I went to Solvang, California, for our an early anniversary trip in, I don't know, it was a few, couple weeks, a week ago, maybe. Um, and... They have a cross-stitch store there that I knew was there because I bought Villa Mirabilia there way back. Got a text. <laughs> and um, back when Villa, before Villa Mirabilia was um, sold out also, or out of print. That was still a current pattern when I bought it 15 years ago. So we went back and this time I decided to get Christmas Elegance, which is... Um, Mirabilia number six so it's a really old one <clears throat> but I had had this on my wish list <clears throat> for for a little while maybe a year <clears throat> because I realized all those colors are gonna be really rich and pretty so I thought that could be fun to do I think I put it up after I finished Royal Holiday just because I don't know it seemed like it would be a fun fun Christmassy one I don't know when I'll start it um, but they also had the Thumbelina was the name of the needlework shop that had the patterns and some kits. It was a really small store, and I didn't see any Mill Hill around. Um, it was literally just a tiny little room, almost like a closet, and they had things around the um, around on the walls that you could look at and sift through kits and things. But there was another shop just around the corner, Rasmussen's. They, upstairs at, at Rasmussen's, they had a whole craft section. So they had cross-stitch kits and um, a few patterns and some yarn for knitting and fabric even. And so they had um, two little displays of Mill Hill beads there that were only $1.50. And since it was in the shop, there was no shipping, you know. So I thought, you know what, I'll just see what I can get. And I have, I did find... Um, I knew I needed to kit up Winter Queen because when I pulled this out in June, I think it was, to start it with the Australian ladies, um, I realized I didn't have any of the beads, which I thought I did. So um, I thought, well, I want to kit that up with Mill Hills if I can find beads in solving. And I realized I never made a point of writing down what I needed. So when I was there and I noticed that this this one shop had beads, so once I decided that, or once I realized that that shop had Mill Hills um, and I had not written down what I needed, I 
thought through who I could ask, who I knew had this pattern, who might be able to send me the list of supplies. And I knew Lorna, the ladybird stitcher, had this pattern because she's one of the Australian ladies who's working on it. And so I, and I had her, um, I have already texted her in, I think it was Facebook Messenger previously, so I already had a string open and everything. So I thought, I'll just ask her, see if she can send me a picture of the back. And she was gracious and went ahead and, and did that. And so it was funny because we were in our room, like winding down for the day in the evening. And I asked, I texted her, and she's like, oh yeah, we're out for lunch right now, but when I get home, <laughs> um, I'll text it to you, which is just so funny how different the time zone is, because it was evening, our time, and probably lunch the following day for her, so it was kind of interesting. <clears throat> but that was great, because then I got it um, that night, and so the following day when we were walking around again, I could go back to the store and picked up some bees. Sadly, they didn't have very many. They had one color for Winter Queen. I needed two packs of all the different colors that they call for. So I got one color of the Herbies, and she still has three more colors, which I have on order, um, from ABC Stitch Therapy, because I was getting another pattern from there, which I'll show you if and when it ever shows up. I know that's one of those online shops that can take a long time to get sometimes, so assuming I get my order, I will hopefully have the rest of these beads along with a couple patterns that I can show you that are a little bit more rare. And then I looked for beads for this one since I had it on me and I found a few of hers as well. Not all of them. These two look similar but since this package is so yellowed I'm not sure how different they are. They're both white. I think this one might be like pearly white and this one is more of a matte white. Um, and this is like a red and a, a uh, oily blue. So those are some of her beads. She has a lot of beads. So she needs more also. <clears throat> but since I'm not, like, I don't have a timeline for when I'm going to start this, I didn't bother buying the rest of her beads yet. I'll just keep in mind that I will need more eventually. So that's what I got in solving. Got one more Mira. And a few beads. And I guess I can talk about my... Storytime sampler first because I've been kind of working on this off and on here and there at home like with uh, shows or reading or whatever so I have not had a lot of travel time but I am working on this periodically and I'm, I've moved Anne up to this spot so I'm working on Anne, Anne of Green Gables for the month of July this is what it looked like last time and this is where it's at now a little bit more done on Anne. I have the house all done except for the doorknob, which is also in her dress, and then which I was gonna do first before her skin, but I realized um, last night I was working on this and I hadn't pulled that color for some reason, so I have to go back and do that. But I started on her skin, did her hat, the the whole rest of the house, and and all the greens. So. I just have the rest of her skin, her dress, and then there's some per pink and purple flowers right here that are also her bows and her, and her eyes and mouth and whatnot. And then I'll continue over into um, August, which is the Phantom of the Opera. The problem with Arbitrary August is I don't know how this one is going to go uh, because it may come up and it may not, and I need more than one day on it even if it does come up. So this one will probably see some um, travel stitching once school starts because I will have a lot more travel time in the valet line. So I will work on that some more um, for my travel stitching as well as the Adventure Awaits Stitch Along will probably need some travel time too. And then when those are both cut up again then I can go back to my monthly little little yellow what's it called little house needleworks <laughs> those those months when I get caught up on these ones I can go back to those so um I guess we can oh yeah my I've also been doing the um, hundred days of of hade with my freebie furry animals because I thought why not it's I don't have 
it, it's it's low key as far as how much you're supposed to stitch every day, at least one stitch. So I figured I could do that and then try to get closer to a finish on this one without having to put it into my rotation. So this is what it looked like last time. And <clears throat> here's where I'm at now. And today is day 30, so I have kept up with it for 30 days. <clears throat> and it's been fun, like, to see it come alive, and you can now see the outline of the squirrel a little bit better with that black in there. It looks a little out of place, but the shading will work eventually, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> so, um, I had been highlighting my stitches in a separate color to see if I could get 2,400 half stitches in the month of July to go along with Full Coverage Fanatics, their By the Numbers Challenge, and I counted them up today and I did not make it. I stitched 1,332 stitches, which would be enough for the 1,200 stitch challenge if they were full stitches, but since they are half stitches, you have to do twice as many, so I did not make that. <clears throat> so I am not too surprised because I only worked on it a little bit every day, not consistently, like a lot every day. So I will not be even bothering with the by the numbers the rest of the year, just like before, because I knew, I know that I, that's not my focus is to get huge chunks done on one piece. Like I'm more of a hop arounder. So <laughs> anyways, my regular pieces, I was just about to start working on grapes by the Golden Kite, <clears throat> and this is a small version, and I worked on this for a couple days, almost got a column finished, but not quite, so this is what it looked like last time, and here it is now, and it looks very similar but I have a lot more done in here. So, park threads really make it hard to show what's left, but there, there's just a handful of stitches in this column that are not done yet. And you can start to see this, um, another twig, like a, probably a grape stick, kind of like this one, that's emerging, which wasn't there before, so that's fun. Um, Part of me felt like just busting this out to, to finish it up, but when I realized there are literally 24 unique colors that are still in here. And there's probably only like 30 <laughs> stitches, and 24 of them are separate colors. So that's what made this take so long, is there was a ton, ton of confetti throughout that whole piece. So I would work a handful of stitches, you know, one to five stitches, and then try to search to find where it appeared again and park it, and then go work another couple. And some of them didn't occur at all again. Some of them occurred like four pages later. Some of them occurred down in the next col in the next row. So it was just time consuming to see progress because there were just so many different colors. But it's still progress and I still like that piece and it'll be fun to keep seeing things grow because every little bit you get like that little stick it just kind of appears and like oh look I'm stitching a, a little stick like I didn't even know that was there so it's fun and then I started ink, cir ink circles tapestry and I was stitching this with a Victorian motto conversion and that I kind of just came up with and I managed to do a little bit in the center over a couple of days. This is 28 count Jobelin um, Antique White, I think. And so there's my start. No fuzzy. So um, I thought that was cute. Each little, each little section went pretty quickly. And I'm doing this one over one, so the little um, stitches are tiny and sweet. So I liked that. That was cute. Um, in general, I'm not really the. I, I'm not really drawn to 
this type of design, which is more just like, I don't know, like Quaker or primitive or whatever, where there's just little floral motifs or whatever. But for something just, I feel like trying all the different brands at least once. So I like pick the pattern of that brand that I like the best and then try it. Because there's been so many new designers that I haven't heard of before, um, before I started floss tube. So I need to try them all. And that's a couple of the patterns I'm getting from ABC Stitch Therapy um, are designers that I haven't um, stitched before either. I, there, one of them is a Seba's Designs pattern and another one is a Just Nan pattern. So I thought that would be fun. And so that was nice to work on. To, it's my first ink circles pattern. And then, let's see, then my next thing was my Adventure Awaits Sal, which Clue 2 was supposed to come out on the 22nd um, UK time, which would have been the night of the 21st, my time. The morning of the 21st, we, were, we left on our anniversary trip. So I was hoping to take this with me because Ada is really nice to work on in the car. So I thought I really want to be able to work on this that while we're gone. Um, but I didn't necessarily want to try to work on it on my phone um, from an email. But I figured it's, it's fairly straightforward. I'm sure I could figure that out. However, she ended up, um, Sally, the owner of Caterpillar Cross Stitch, end up, ended up having a wedding a friend's wedding that weekend, so she released the clue early, which is perfect for me, because then I could print it out ahead of time before we left and had the paper copy on hand to work on um, on our vacation. So I took this along with me, and this is pretty much all I worked on on while we were gone. I, I put in some stitches on my Heaven and Earth, because I brought that along too for the 100 Days of Hade, and got a little bit done on that every day as well, and then all my other stitching time I worked on this. So. Um, this is what it looked like last time, and here it is now. Clue 2 is finished, and I did the border over here as well since it was close. And that's the whole big continent of Asia, which is fun. So there's a Russian doll, some trees and mountains, maybe Siberia, and the Great Wall of China. This is the yellow crane tower. Cherry Blossom Tree, a shrine in Japan, which I have it written down. Itsukushima Shrine, something like that, and then the Taj Mahal. So that was fun to get that all done. This is on light blue, 16 count Ada, and it was the kit that she sent. So that turned out really cute. Um, I'm curious to see where where she's gonna go next if she's gonna go like clockwise and come around and have North America be last or so we'll see I'm curious to see if she's gonna have a cute little penguin on Antarctica because my daughter would love to see that so I worked on that the two days we were gone or actually we were gone three days I was supposed to give that a two-day rotation and just kind of see what happens um, and when I was kidding things up for our trip, Dragon Ride was meant to be next, <clears throat> which probably would have been fairly easy to work on, but I, um, I realized when I was getting things ready, I didn't want to have to bring all of the different colors. Um, and that one was t wider, um, a roll of fabric, so it would have stuck out of my bag farther, and I just thought, you know what, I'm just gonna leave it home. I'll give Adventure Await some more time and then I threw in the story time sampler in case I finished Adventure Await so I'd have something else to work on that needed work, needed attention. So as it turned out, I spent three and a half days working on the Adventure Await. So all three days we were gone plus half day coming back. Um, and that day we came back, I worked on that in the morning to try to finish it up because it was really close. I didn't want to leave it. Um, and... What else did I do? I was helping my daughter with stuff. I don't remember. Some, I was doing other things. You know how it is when you're coming back from a vacation. Getting back into things. And I realized at the very end of the day, 
I had decided I wasn't going to do Dragon Ride at all because it just didn't seem worth it to get it out for just a short time. And and then I realized I haven't done my Heaven and Earth today <laughs> for the challenge. So I that was the one day I almost forgot to do it, but I managed to remember and do a few stitches and check it off. So I'm still still good on my challenge, but that was one day I almost forgot to do it. Um, because I usually do that first thing in the morning with just a few stitches, and then whenever I get time the rest of the day, I'll work on my main project. So since I worked on my Caterpillar cross-stitch starting in the morning just to get try to get it done, um, it kind of threw my schedule off mentally. So. So that took three and a half days, and I didn't work on and didn't work on Dragon Ride at all. And then the next time, my next rotation was supposed to be Knitting Woman, and I didn't work on that either. So um, while we were gone, my husband and I tend to talk about like it always comes up like if there's anything in our house that needs needs decorating still because I'm not a good decorator. He's not really either, but it's fun. It's nice to like bounce ideas off of each other to get some ideas because neither one of us are great at it. Um, and he cares what's on the walls. Like I know some people, some women have a love of decorating and their husbands don't care and they can do whatever they want and fill the house up with whatever they want on the walls and their husbands don't even notice. Um, my husband cares what's on the wall and I'm not very good at decorating. <laughs> so it is nice to collaborate on those things. So when we're away together, we tend to we, it tends to come up at some point. So that made me remember my uh, waterfall in Yosemite piece, which I am doing for our living space because he likes it. And it's an outdoorsy, mountainy piece. This is the mini version as well. Just like my grapes, it's a small version. But still plenty of um, detail and um, I got burnt out on the thought of this pattern because last May I was thinking of doing monogamous May on this piece and then just got overwhelmed thinking I'm gonna hate it when I'm done I don't want to do it and decided to do regular mania instead um, and haven't worked on it a whole lot since then I tried diagonal parking um, I tried a bunch of different things on this piece and it hasn't really I like it when I work on it, but it doesn't usually draw me in. So since I was feeling like working on it, I figured I better work on it. So I nixed Knitting Woman and figured this could work for the travel theme for Full Coverage Fanatics and my grapes could work for fire because it has the oranges and the red colors in it. Um, so I could still fit in the travel or fit in the themes for in Full Coverage Fanatics and still go with my gut. So. I think I can try to find a picture for you of what this looked like last time I worked on it. It's been a while. And here it is right now. So I just worked on this for two days. So mainly in here, in the sky. I've been kind of annoyed with parking lately and not wanting to park. So I had a bunch of parked threads right here and I worked them in and came down here a little bit too in the white and then I had a few more parked threads here and I've managed to do a few of these top ones over this direction and there's still a few more but I worked in several several of my parked threads in the sky that's that's what I did for the two days and I love this how it's coming together so I do want to spend more time on it and part of me wishes I could do the hundred days of Hade on this one even though it's a golden kite so <clears throat> just to see how I can get it get some traction on it um but I can't do two challenge pieces at the same time and that challenge is going to go till October so if for some reason I totally choke on that challenge and miss a day or something I might switch to this one or when that challenge is finished I might switch to this one as a new daily 15 minutes a day piece and 15 minutes a day is generally is very general. It's kind of my max. I don't want to go over 15 minutes, but I definitely often go under. I kind of just start stitching, <clears throat> and if it feels like it's been about 15 minutes, I'll stop. If I get to a good stopping point and it hasn't been 15 minutes yet, I'll still stop. 
Um, if I know I won't have a lot of stitching time at all that day, I'll just do a couple stitches and stop. Um, so 15 minutes is like the max for that daily goal for the challenge. Um, so maybe when that challenge is over, I'll pick up Waterfall and make that like a daily a daily piece, because that would be nice to get that one, um, give it a little bit more love. So I spent a couple days on that, and then I had my two Christmas, last two Christmas pieces for Christmas in July, and the first one was the Nativity by Donna Gelsinger, Heaven and Earth Designs, and I'm up here in page one. This is, this page is a Year of Whips piece, so if I could finish this page, that would be a Year of Whips goal. I'm getting close, so I think it is a reasonable goal for the rest of the year. Um, this is what it looked like last time. And here's where I got to. So I filled in a couple colors of the brown, and then I filled in some of this darker blue along here, which <clears throat> made a significant difference in how it looks. So there's still a few colors left in that column. Then I need to do one more column, and then the page will be done. So. Um, I just love how this looks. It's so cool. Lots of detail in that one. Um, and I see um, iStitch, I believe is her Instagram name. She's working on this and she's so far along. Um, she's finished like the wise men and Mary and Joseph. She's finished baby Jesus now. It just it looks amazing. So she's motivating me too to keep working on it. So I did that for a couple days. And then I pulled out my last Christmas piece, which is the Moonlight Skater Stocking, which I have not shown since my whip parade way back at the beginning of my floss tube life also. And this is a really old dimensions kit. The, the um, copyright on the, um, on the canvas is 1997. <laughs> so that's pretty old. I ended up sewing stockings for my family, so I don't need stockings for uh, my family, and I don't know if I was planning on making this for myself when I started it. Could have started this in high school, potentially, high school or college, um, but once I got married I ended up making stockings because it was a lot faster. So I have sewn stockings with fabric and everybody has a matching one and I'm not going to do that. So when I pulled out this for my whip parade back last year, like last spring, I remember thinking I had the lady all done and I had the man started and I remember thinking why don't I just finish this and be done. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm a lot closer to finishing this than I was before but I think that's why it languished for so long is because I realized I don't need a stocking. Why do I, why would I want to work on that? Um, so, <clears throat> that got messed up. Um, this is what it looked like at my whip parade, which is probably the last time I have, it, have had it on video. And this is how far I was able to get to. This, uh, this time. Let's see. I will probably cut it off around the fold of this fabric here and go to like just outside her dress and go to just outside this um, lantern and just under this. So like you can see I've already started to cut over into the man, into this boy here because I'm planning to just stitch this um, ice right here instead of him because I don't want like half of a person right here and I'm not going to stitch the dog and the people I'm just going to kind of put more ice here so um, and then just cut it out and make like a pillow out of it or something so <clears throat> I finished the man and I worked on the lantern and I'm starting to work now on the um, on the ice colors that are like the reflection of the light and then there'll be some blues and things <clears throat> so it is a, this, this is needlepoint with in the kit, it, it gives you DMC, and the DMC is worked with six strands in a half st in a continental half stitch, and so um, that's what I'm doing. 
it's a steady impatience for me because I like to be told exactly where the stitches go and this is not like that. The chart is not a chart, it's a guide. I'll show you a little bit of it. You just have little like amorphous shapes with the numbers of the colors in it so you know which colors go where but more than not you're just following the colors that are printed on here um, so it's like I was I figured well maybe I'll just follow what's on the cover and just be nitpicky with that um, but then I went back and looked at what I'd previously done with the edge of this man and it's not like the cover so I think I was just stitching according to the coloring on here, which will be slightly different. <clears throat> so I just need to let it go, <laughs> not be a perfectionist, and let it be okay to be um, not perfect and not, um, not exactly what the cover looks like. It's going to be really difficult when it comes time to do back stitching. And there's a good amount of back stitching. Um, there's like the edges of her dress and the ice skates and there's some face detailing and her, the hats and the lantern. And I'm curious, and like their fingers, I'm curious how much I'll want to do. If I want to just like do the lantern cause you, and the stick gates because those are the clear places. Like there's this couching here too for the ice skates. So I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure how much I'll want to do, but because that will be even more amorphous. <laughs> so we'll see. But it was fun to get that out again, and now if I get it out for Arbitrary August, I will. Just, I still have a thread going, and I'll just keep plugging away at that until that little chunk is done, and then I can, you know, easily get that finished a lot quicker than if I were to try to do the whole stocking. So. So amorphous needlepoint is not my favorite. I probably wouldn't mind something like Counted Canvas. That's, it tells you exactly what to do and where to go. Um, but if it's just printed on there and just follow it, like, yeah, that's not my thing. <laughs> so today I could work on that some more. To, and part of me was wanting to really do that because... Um, I I thought, well, maybe I could get all the stitching finished, but then I realized there's still back stitching, and there's no way I can do all of it in one more day. Um, the other thing I was considering is my diamond painting, doing another diagonal on that. However, I just put out a puzzle on the main game table yesterday. So if I did my diamond painting, I'd have to do it on the kitchen table, and that's still a possibility, but... I'm not sure. The other possibility is to go back to my heirloom nativity sampler and finish that floral band that I didn't get to last time. Or keep working on the story time sampler. So I have a bunch of things I could do. The other thing that's weighing in on my decision making is the Jessie Marie Does Stuff 5th Birthday Sal for her Floss Tube channel. Started on Sunday and she is doing a sal where there's five days so that the fifth day is off August 2nd, which is, I believe, her actual fifth fifth anniversary of her channel. And so she has Jessie Marie does stuff free choice. So you work on something with a J, an M, a D, and an S. Um, Sunday was the day for J. And I was working on this, and I was like, I can't figure out anything that has to do with a J. Moonlight Skater Stocking, no J's. Barbara Mock is a designer, no J's. Dimensions, no J's. Fancy Victorian Lady, no J's. You know, I was ice skating, no J's. So, um, Needlepoint, no J's. <laughs> so then I figured, well, I didn't necessarily want to change my plans to fit the theme, but I wanted to kind of participate in the theme to be able to post on Instagram and share and celebrate with Jessie. So I also was working on my Heaven and Earth designs for the 100 Days of Hade, and Jessie is the one who inspired me to do the challenge. After watching her video, I was like, you know what, maybe I should try that. So the for Sunday's J Day, it was because Jessie inspired me to work on that project for the challenge. So therefore, 
that qualifies for the letter J. That's a, the a major stretch because my heaven and earth designs doesn't have any J's in it either. It's furry animals, furry bee, Donna Gelsinger, I think. Maybe it's not Donna. Oh, it works. Judy. <laughs> so that worked for J even better. Judy Mustang, Mustang L O, something like that. So yay, that, that qualifies even better than my stretch with Jesse. So um, I worked on this on Sunday because it's my challenge. I work on it every day. Um, so that qualifies for J. And then M was yesterday, Moonlight Skater Stocking. So that counted for yesterday. And today is the letter D. So that is really drawing me to my diamond painting because I could work on my diamond painting for the letter D, get another diagonal, which is another D, um, so I could be good and work on something that I'm supposed to be working on, or I could work on my diamond painting, or I could go back to my moon, uh, my heirloom nativity sampler, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I might end up working on my diamond painting just because of all the Ds that are involved and because... I rarely get an extra day that's not planned out with cross stitch, so I might as well enjoy it. Um, let's see. So we'll see what happens <laughs> when I come back. Um, tomorrow I'm going to start my arbitrary August um, vlog, so I'll probably just share with you tomorrow whatever I did today. So, But you won't see that. I'll probably only post it once a week or so, um, so you won't see that for about a week, but you'll find out soon. And almost to arbitrary August and my winners for my 3,000 subscribers but I just saw this I had one more thing to share not really it's kind of haul but it's not really haul it was um, just some <clears throat> fabric my mother-in-law found some fabric just 14 count Ida in her stash when she was going through she doesn't she doesn't cross stitch but she sews and she was going through various things and found this and so gave it to me. And then the same day, my sister-in-law brought this to me, which is a really loose weave sewing fabric, but it's it looks a lot like um, linen <clears throat> that you could stitch on. And she's like, "This does this look like something you could stitch on? It was kind of too loose of a weave for her to be using as a lining for the dresses she's been making for our church... Um, <clears throat> what do you call it, a ministry? Um, so I counted it, and it's like 42 stitches in one direction and 30 in the other direction. <clears throat> so I might do some more math. I didn't even check. If I did, like, cross-stitched over two in one direction and over three in the other direction, if it would make more of a square, I could be totally off on that. Um... I didn't actually do the math, so I will do that later. But I was, she let me keep it. Um, I'm curious also if I, it's just white, so I'm curious if I dye it, if it would change the count at all. <clears throat> I'm curious if it would, I might just try stitching on it to see what it looks like. Um, and it, just experiment a little bit with it. So that was kind of fun. And I also made some needle minders, finally in preparation for Arbitrary August because <clears throat> I would like all of my projects to have one um, stored with them and they don't and so I needed a bunch more. So I got a package of buttons. This package came with these these were wooden buttons and this one too at Joann's. These ones said they had 18 in it and they had 19 and these ones said they had 8 and there was 9. So I got one extra in both of those packages. These were some uh, vintage buttons from my husband's grandmother, and there were seven of those, so I made those into needle minders too. And then this one used was a keychain that was given to me by Debbie Duarte from Canada um, when she sent me some of her other um, stash that she was getting rid of. She sent me this keychain, and so I cut the keychain off and made that into a needle minder too, so I can enjoy that on one of my projects. It needs to be something that has a slightly bigger um, roll in order to fit, because it's a little bit bigger, but they're all lightweight and beautiful, and I'm excited to start using them, so I'll keep this by my 
chair until I use them all up. Um, and then when I have just a few left, I'll go back and put them. I have a little um, um, side table that has some little scrolly wooden, scrolly metal thing, like decorative part on it. And I usually put my extra needle minders there until I need them. But since there were so many, I grabbed this old um, cookie sheet that my kids used to use for like letter magnets for making words with letter magnets. And so um, I stole that from them for all of these for Arbitrary August. And then when I just have a couple left, I'll go ahead and put them on my side table for the rest of the time until I have used them all up. And I still have enough magnets for 17 more if I need to. So hopefully I will be decreasing my whip count some, although I have plans to make two new starts in September. So I don't know. I hope to I hope I will stop eventually be finishing things. So So part of me really likes the idea of being somewhat monogamous where I pick like a non full coverage piece and work on it till it's done to lower my whip count and then switch to a full coverage piece and stitch until I get it like a page finish. Um, and then go back to another non full coverage and stitch it till it's done. And that works for some people. Um, I just recently watched Nell um, from Little Yellow House Crafts. I'm two weeks behind on FlossTube videos. <laughs> so it was her most recent video, but it was two weeks ago. And she's been doing that and it, it's been working really well for her. But the current, the things she's currently working on are the more more primitive style, um, like Little House Needleworks and um, of that nature. And it's easier to do that, monogamous till it's finished with smaller pieces or pieces that take less time in general. The pieces that I've chosen, for the most part, are enormous and stitching on them till they're done could take a really long time. <laughs> but part of me is still curious if that would work and they may not take as long as I think they would um, if I just sat down and worked on them until they were done. So that thought really appeals to me. The other part of me has been toying with, I really enjoyed having a weekly project for the weekdays and then a weekend project. I did that earlier on in my floss tube career and I really liked that. Part of me wants to go back to that. The other part of me wants to continue to try shorter rotations to get through more things. I don't know. I'm always like weighing the options and f wondering what I like better and maybe it's just different things in different seasons and not to just not to try to find something that's always going to be right because it may not always be right it may be right for a season and then I feel like changing again so at this point I think I'm going to try a three-day rotation in September um, and we'll see what happens with arbitrary August part of me is really really interested to see what happens when some of my really old whips get pulled out like um, if they become the new love of my life or if I decide I don't want to work on them anymore or, you know, whatever. Tomorrow, August 1st, is going to be very, very, very small stitching time, most likely. It's probably the worst day of the entire month. At looking forward, um, weird day to start on for arbitrary August, but that's just the way it is. Um, so... I'm hoping I don't pull a really old piece for tomorrow because I don't want to have to like take the time to sort out what I'm doing and where to go and where to, what to start with when, on such a short day. So I'm hoping that it'll be something that I've worked on somewhat recently so that I can just say, okay, I'll just work on this color and do a few stitches and I'm good. So we'll see. But I have my little, uh, little bowl with um, each of my pieces is written down and I have um, 48 in this bowl because I have 51 whips but I only have 48 in the bowl because I decided I'm not going to do my furry animals because that's going to get time every day anyways so I don't want to I want to try to get as many whips touched in August as I can <clears throat> Since I'm already going to be working on that, it doesn't need to come up in my rotation. So I didn't include that one. I am not including Stargazer because I decided I want to work on that with 
stitching Marie on her birthday on August 31st. So that's written in on the 31st. The other one that I'm writing in is Adventure Awaits the Caterpillar Cross Stitch because I don't want it to come up. I'm caught up right now, so I don't want it to show up in my rotation, in my arbitrary plans before the next clue comes out because that would be a wasted day, like have to redraw or something. So I manually added that in on the 22nd, which is the day the, the clue comes out, and I'll just work on it that day. It will need more time, but I'll do the rest of it as travel stitching. Um, so I decided not to make that one random because I don't want it to show up on the 9th or, so, or whatever day and then not be able to work on it because I don't have the next pattern. Um, I did decide to take out my kids' pieces from their prospective birthday dates because I wanted to keep it even more random. So I felt like there were too many days being filled up with stuff. Too plenty. So I took them out and added them to the randomness. I may or may not get to them, and they will not most likely be on the day that they normally would be, but that's okay. Um, so there's only two, only two days in August I have a pick so far, and the um, furry animals will get my daily no more than 15 minutes for the challenge. And I'm going to be drawing um, on camera every day. <clears throat> I'll probably do it like I did before where I'm just behind the camera showing you my stuff because I really like how that works. I can do it quickly without too much setup and in any room I want. And um, I'll just do a vlog that way for the whole month of August to show you. I'll, I'll pull it out, show you what it is. I'll go find it, show you where it's at, and then the next day I'll show you how far I got. Um, so I'll start that tomorrow. There's a lot of people doing Arbitrary August in a variety of ways, so not everybody's doing it just like me, which is fine. Um, so if you want to join in, feel free. There's people who are drawing a random whip for a chunk of time, not just a day, for like five days or something. Um, there's people who are drawing ahead of time so they know how to prep their fabric because not everybody is an in-hand stitcher. They need a little bit more time to make sure they're all in the frames and things. Um, there's some people who are only participating when they're home and not when they're on vacation. You know, so there's different ways that you can adjust it to make it work for you. Um, if you do decide to do it, feel free to share with me your, like, Instagram name and use the hashtag Arbitrary August, and I'm following that hashtag so we can, everybody can see what we're doing. And that should be really fun. So I look forward to seeing what everybody's doing and how how the month goes for all of you. If some of you are choosing to include really old whips like I am, I'm, I'm curious to see how we all um, resolve that, you know, like if we decide we like them or if we decide we don't anymore because it's been too long. Um, so I'm curious to see how it's going to go for everybody. Um, my final thing, I think I finished everything with all of my stitching. My final thing is my giveaway. For 3,000 subscribers, I mentioned last time, I had, um, I've ra my, my channel has passed 3,000 subscribers, which is um, amazing, <laughs> kind of incredible to believe, and <clears throat> I've really enjoyed the past year and a half, and I've loved the interaction with everybody and the motivation to want to keep stitching so I have things to show, and um, so I was going to draw three... $10 gift certificates to my Etsy shop, which are going to be, which can, you could get um, a variety of patterns for free, um, or put it towards something bigger. And there's um, 55 people, as of this morning, I believe, who, I don't think that anybody showed up this morning with a new comment, but there were 55 people who told me what their favorite season was, and I realized I didn't tell you what my favorite season was. So I think if I were to have to choose, I would say spring, because I like the medium temperatures, not super cold, not super hot, um, and I prefer the colors of spring to the colors of fall. I like fall leaves on the trees, but as far as like stitching with them, I think I prefer spring colors. Um, I do like the rain, 
spring in Southern California doesn't have rain. It has rain in the winter. <laughs> but in general, spring and rain go together. Um, so I would say spring is my favorite with fall a close second. And let's see, I have, let me double check, see if there's any last minute entries. <clears throat> nope. So I will go to random number generator and I have one through 55 and I'm gonna pick. I have my list here written down. As I, as I received the email notifications of the comments that qualified, I wrote everybody's name down. So the first generate is 36 and that is Pam Copenhaver. So I will, let's see, how am I gonna do this? That's number one. You're gonna get a $10 gift certificate to my shop. And I forgot to, to write down, I was gonna maybe pull, pull on what everybody's favorite one, favorite season was to tell you guys, but I didn't, I'm not that advanced in my YouTube skills. So I'm gonna generate again. Let's see what it's gonna do. And that's 46. So 46 is gonna challenge my pronunciation skills here. Sally Thibodeau, however you say your name. Hopefully I didn't mess it up too much. You earn another one. And then the third one, since it's 3,000, I had to do multiples of three. 47, wow, right after. And that's Bridget. So I will comment on your comments and tell you how to get a hold of me. Probably just um, my uh, stitchinmommy7 at gmail.com. And you can, you can email me your email and, um, or I'll just write, yeah. You can email me and then I will get in touch with you with uh, a code to be able to get $10 off in my Etsy shop. So congratulations, all three of you. And I wanted to say that my temperature quilt pattern is available now. It's on my website and it's got seven different temperature charts. There's only 20 colors for the blocks. This temperature garden had 25 different colors to choose from for the petals. I narrowed it down to 20 for the um, blocks and there's four to five degrees per color. And how that ended up working out is it ended up being a little bit more diverse. You would think it would be less diverse, but it ended up being better. Like, cause if you think of an actual quilt with fabric, you wouldn't have quite as many colors to choose from, I would think. Um, but it ended up making it a little bit more um, with bigger differences throughout the year, especially since we're doing highs and lows, the differences were bigger um, throughout the course of the year. I'm, it's hard to explain how that worked, but it looked better <laughs> to do um, a larger range of fewer colors. Um, so that's what I went with. And there's seven different ones to choose from ranging, I, I believe I labeled them hot, warm, mild, varied, fair, or maybe it was fair, varied, mild, cool, and then cold. So there's seven different ones. If you need something that's even beyond that, like you have a really wide range that you need or a really narrow range that you need because where you live is um, either really extreme compared to what I've provided or really narrow. Um, feel free to email me or send me a message in Etsy um, to request a, another chart uh, temperature range for you because I'm more than happy to do that. Like if you need something um, that's enough different from what I've provided that you can't figure it out on your own, then I'm happy, more than happy to make up another chart for you and just send that to you. So you can like um, adjust your temperature chart with some new temperatures. So feel free to... Um, email me about that. I've done that for a couple people for the temperature garden already, so I've, um, I'm okay doing that. Um, <clears throat> and I think that's everything. So, um, i trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to say. There probably was. <laughs> I don't remember anymore. So I think that's enough for today, and I am really happy to be a part of this community. I'm really happy to share my um, 
my stitching and my designs with everybody, and I hope you all have a wonderful week. Enjoy Arbitrary August if you decided to participate. Oh yeah, talking about going forward, S is tomorrow for Jessie Marie's birthday sale. I'm really hoping I pull something that I can make work that either has an S in the name, in the designer, in the in the brand, or I can just somehow make it work to go with S because I think I just want to right off the bat do Arbitrary August, especially since I'm the one hosting it. So I'm really hoping whatever I pick will go along with an S theme. S is a fairly common letter, so hopefully it works. Um, and then the, the next day is free choice, so it works for that no matter what. So congratulations, Jesse, on your five-year um, floss tube reversary, and I hope everybody enjoys their stitching this coming month, and thanks for listening. Happy, happy stitching. <laughs>